Hey everyone, it's Corey McCarthy, and thank you for tuning in. I feel like I'm on a roll with finding new and interesting research to share of late. I got a study to share with you all this week that was just published on June 24th, uh, so about two weeks ago, in the highly reputable journal Nature. But before I begin, I do ask that you all kindly stay through the end of this video, as I have a special announcement to make afterwards. Anyhow, let's get started. This study looked at the effects of physiologically relevant doses of caffeine on brown adipose tissue, or BAT for short, in rodent and human in vitro as well as human in vivo models. In vitro, caffeine exposure promotes the expression of a signal protein called uncoupling protein 1, or UCP1 for short, in the caffeine-exposed cells. This, in turn, significantly enhances the cell's use of energy. So, as expected, cells exposed to caffeine experience an increase in their number of mitochondria. Furthermore, caffeine exposure increases the number of beta-3 adrenergic receptors and decreases the number of beta-2 adrenergic receptors. In other words, exposure to caffeine can increase fat breakdown and heat production, but can decrease uh, vasodilation in muscle tissue. The latter is really not a shock to me, as caffeine is known for being vasoconstrictive. Uh, which is why I've always found it dumb that pre-workout manufacturers, uh, many of which market uh, their products as providing a pump in the gym, would include caffeine in their product formulations. That is scientifically counterproductive for facilitating an optimal pump. But these sorts of supplement companies are run by two-bit scam artists, so what can you really expect? But back to the study. For the in vivo experiment, nine volunteers, four of which were male and five were female, all aged 27 years and all with a normal BMI, underwent thermal imaging both before and a half hour after the experiment process. For the experiment, participants were either given a 200 milliliter espresso containing 65 milligrams of caffeine or 200 milliliters of water. Both were provided to participants at about room temperature. 30 minutes after consuming the espresso, a significant rise in body temperature was witnessed among the participants. Ergo, this experiment demonstrates that a cup of coffee appears to have a direct impact on brown fat function, which echoes the findings from the previous in vitro observations. Granted, the sample size of the human experiment was quite small at only nine, uh, thus future research on a larger sample size would be interesting. The researchers would also like to conduct future experiments to ascertain whether the caffeine acted alone or whether some component or components in the coffee helped stimulate the brown fat. Nonetheless, these results are quite interesting. They suggest that caffeine, or generally speaking, uh, caffeinated coffee, uh, could be beneficial to a comprehensive weight management program. And I've discussed the longevity, anti-aging, and anti-cancer benefits of coffee consumption on this channel before. Uh, it looks like we can add this to that list. Anyway, leave your thoughts and comments below. Uh, do any of you regularly drink coffee? Uh, if so, how much do you consume uh, per day? Uh, and why do you drink coffee? Do share your responses below. And don't forget to like and share this video if you found it interesting. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you have not already. Press the bell button for notifications and check back here weekly. All three avenues will help ensure that you do not miss any new content from me. Furthermore, check out the video description for links to my products and services, as well as my affiliate links such as Amazon, and other ways that you can show your support uh, to me and my channel if you genuinely enjoy and get use from what I provide here. And that includes an array of my science-based training and nutrition ebooks, which can help you get results like those seen on my clients pictured here. Now, before I let you all go, my announcement. If any of you are into the music of Pink Floyd, or early to mid-90s Porcupine Tree, or the Disintegration Era Cure, or gothic ethereal wave like the Eden House, just to name four quick examples, then you may enjoy the music that I have just released, especially if you like most, if not all, of the artists that I had just mentioned, and especially if you enjoy dark, brooding, melancholic, and ambient song-based music that is often dripping with echoes and reverbs. Oh, and includes melodic Pink Floyd-esque guitar solos, too. 
My project is called The Tortured Sky, and my debut recording is a five-song EP titled Melancholia that I've been working on since October of 2018. It was entirely self-produced and recorded with my modest home studio setup. Uh, the only thing that was handled externally was the mastering process. Otherwise, it was all me, uh, all of the writing, all of the performances. And it's freshly available for streaming and download on sites like Bandcamp, CD Baby, Amazon. There's also a dedicated YouTube channel, a Facebook page, a Twitter account, and more. I've linked to all of the current sites below in the description for those who are interested in checking out my work. And if you like what you hear, I would truly appreciate your support. Uh, soon my music will be available on iTunes, uh, Apple Music, Spotify, Last.fm, and possibly Pandora, etc. According to my distributor, at least. And I will be posting all updates as they occur on Facebook and Twitter. So do follow me on those platforms if you are interested in staying up to date uh, with my musical progress. Right now, I'm just in the very early stages of marketing and promotion, uh, trying to find and grow the appropriate audience for what I am specifically doing. Uh, and word of mouth, of course, uh, is an excellent form of promotion. In fact, some of my favorite musicians had built their own audiences through word of mouth, and things just grew from there. Anyway, thank you all for your support, and thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care.